time to put the spotlight on dealing with the deficit and a deficit of a different kind that we usually talk to about uh, here at the desk and that of skills right here in South Africa. Brett Cousins of Regenesis Business School and Natalie Maroon who's lead strategist at LR. LRMG join us <laughs> at the desk this morning. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, Natalie, let's perhaps start off with you because, uh, you know, we talk about the unemployment situation in South Africa on a regular basis yeah. and perhaps not so talked about is just what we are looking at in terms of the jobs pool. And it's quite staggering. There are currently one million jobs available in South Africa. So if that's the case, why are we sitting with the unemployment situation we, we, we sit with? Well, Alicia, thank you very much for inviting us. And it's largely a function of the massive skills gap that we're sitting with. So government has 360,000 jobs, the private sector 640,000 jobs, and what we can't find today are skilled enough people to be able to place into these positions and to be able to respond what, to what these, uh, these positions are demanding. Mm -hmm. And it places a real burden on the country, it places a burden on business, and it, it's a crisis that unless we get right, we're going to run into serious trouble as a country. Well, let's bring in Brett here <coughs> from, from Regenesis, and you have this interesting uh, announcement, uh, Brett, about uh, a free degree. Now, I would think some of the skills gap, Natalie, is because people can't afford to go to university, mm. some of it's because they cannot qualify to, or there's no space. This, you claim, will be a game changer for the sector. Mm. How can you offer degrees for nothing? Thank you. Um, David, what we've realized is that uh, you're correct. The, the affordability of filling the, that skills gap is very difficult. And Regenesis over the last 14 years has decided to put the entire qualification program suite open to the economy and all those that wish to absorb that material and absorb the skills that are required to then hopefully fill that skill set. I mean, if you look about what companies look for, one in, f one in two companies don't bring on employment because of lack of competency. Now, that means there's lack of skills. And we're saying, you know, the, the economy, the knowledge economy is now the free economy. There is knowledge out there, we, and we're allowing the, uh, the environment to consume mm. that, to hopefully upskill themselves and then go into employment. And thereafter, hopefully the employer then starts funding the actual uh, learning of those staff members. Mm. Yeah. But how are you going to pay for this? <laughs> exactly. You've <laughs> got to question the, the sustainability of a business model like this. Okay, we've utilized what we've known as the freemium model. So we've put out into the public with our various partners the entire suite of a qualification. That is our study material, the e-books, the videos that we mm -hmm. put together to allow the learners to consume. When they want to then be qualified, there is a fee that is then payable. And our hope is that the employer, if they seek that employment, will help fund that, that portion so that they can become qualified. However, if you think 70% of the population is employed by entrepreneurs and SMEs with 50 or less mm -hmm. staff, uh, staff members, affordability to study is still a challenge. So we're saying, well, at least you can upskill yourself from an internal perspective and then apply that back into the workplace. Of course, Natalie, affordability is just one of the impediments mm -hmm. to actually tackling this skills deficit mm -hmm. that, uh, that you highlighted a little earlier. And one of the issues that's come up time and time again is that it's one thing having that academic basis. It's translating academics into actual skills that are usable in the workforce. How much of a solution do you see this offering to your problem? You know, not to be terribly controversial here, Bert, and put you on the spot, but it's exactly that. So making people competent is not the same as getting people educated, is, is different. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to get really creative as business in terms of how we get people to a point where they are able to contribute meaningfully to business. So you come out of varsity, you're fresh, you're green, Yes, you studied, but it doesn't translate into real value for their employer. And I think there is therefore an onus on business to start getting creative around how we quickly immerse and upskill people such that they can add value. But there's that vicious circle, isn't there? <coughs> of you know, people want, we're short of skilled people. We need skilled people. We haven't got time to have people being mentored for three years while they learn the job. Mm. And then, of course, the young guys coming in haven't got the experience. Mm. Mm. How do you break that vicious circle? Tax concessions, lower wages, what? I'm not sure that there is absolutely one silver bullet to, to breaking it. I think the, the answer rests in our capacity to be creative around the problem. So I think if we look at the, the nature of the way we, we educate people and what we educate them about, I seriously question the validity of that in terms of the value it's going to add to me as an employer. 
And I'm saying business needs to couple with your academic institutions, with your schools even, and begin to put, put a creative plan in place that in, in, in the first instance gives people skills that are immediately translatable in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And it can't start at varsity, it's got to start at high school. We got to get people to be more proficient and we got to get our youth to get their head around the, the concept that you got to start small. So the idea of getting you into a call center, working the call center environment, getting you, uh, you know, in, in a telesales environment, developing this huge host of skills mm. that ultimately can be honed and taken in a direction at any given time. So I think, we, you know, we obsess with finding the ideal job and it must be high profile and it must deliver yeah. into all of our aspirations when in fact it's much more of a building block that we need. Exactly. And we need to create, as I say, from the outset, from people coming into to high school, get them skilled so that they can make this meaningful contribution as they hit the ground. Yeah, Brett, of course, uh, what you're putting on the table is a stepping stone in the right direction. Uh, from conversations uh, that you've had with business, just how open are they to actually, you know, venturing down this partnership with, you know, an endeavor like yours, uh, so to speak, so that uh, we don't only see things happening in theory, but in practice as well. I'm not disagreeing with what Natalie says, mm -hmm. uh, and we look after that, that after the matric level, that l once you've left matric, mm -hmm. what you're finding is, A, the affordability to be able to get into a university, to be able to afford to pay for the studies. So what you're also looking at is businesses are now implementing uh, internal learning strategies, but there's that risk factor of what is going to be value, what is the cost to actually then put your staff onto this training program. Yeah. And, and what's that risk of success thereafter. So by implementing what we've in, in launched with the free business education, it actually becomes risk free. You can put your entire organization onto the program, gain the relevant experience whilst learning, and when you've got your selected uh, staff or, few, or, or candidates that can then go into the qualification route, you've already reduced the risk up front of that cost. So they do pay, but they don't pay up front? Mm. No. No payment up front, you only pay once you decide that you want to then actually take on the qualification. Natalie, I just wanted to pick up one point there. You talk about companies hiring teams rather mm. than individuals. This yes. sounds interesting. This is a, a new move um, and an interesting new move and, and it's built on the, the um, premise that teams are, are often more effective than individuals. And when you've formed a team unit and when you are congruent as a team unit, you're able to get that exponential performance that you wouldn't get out of necessarily an individual or a newly formed team because teams go through all these dynamics. So I predict that we will see increasingly a group of knowledge workers bandied together. They will understand each other, harness their, their, their strengths as a team, and they will become a serious They'll have serious capacity to mm. trade in the market. And Certainly I think it's something clever. that uh, we can identify with, you know, in the type of industry we are. It's a team that puts a show like this so together. So we're for hire. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that on <laughs> air. <laughs>